Hey everybody, it's Mike. All right, so uh, I want to talk to you about the rage of the untreated codependent. And um, what I mean by codependent in this case is anybody who has been or is currently in a relationship with a borderline and if that relationship lasted more than say 24 or 48 hours. If you became enmeshed in them and had that uh, personal relationship that went on for more than a couple of days and you stayed in it, you are by definition a codependent. You can replace partner of a borderline with the same word. People want to argue with me about what a codependent is and whether or not they're codependent. A codependent means somebody who is in a relationship with somebody who has some serious dysfunction and you have to find a way to compensate in order to stay in a relationship with somebody who has a very severe dysfunction. In this case, we're talking about an untreated borderline, somebody who has untreated borderline personality disorder. If you're in a relationship, I don't care for how long, I don't care how successful, you're a codependent. You can still be a codependent even if you are in therapy and your borderline partner is in therapy. That you might have a great relationship. It still doesn't change the fact that you are a codependent. Okay? And so what I want to talk to you about is that, uh, first off, my goal here in this uh, video channel, this YouTube channel, is to help codependents, people who have been or are currently in a relationship with somebody who has untreated borderline personality disorder. And I want to do what I can to share my experience and what I've learned in order to achieve a state of uh, recovery in that. So before I go any further, I am not a psychologist, psychiatrist. I am not a mental health professional of any kind. Uh, anything that I say here, if you choose to take action on it, is completely your responsibility and nothing I say should be taken in place of actual advice from a professional mental health expert. All right, so moving on, what I want to do is, you know, I, I want you guys to understand if you, if in my experience, if you want to heal from the trauma of having been in a relationship with a borderline. You're going to have to be completely ruthlessly honest with yourself. Um, we all know the damage that borderline personality disorder does, both to the borderline themselves and to those who are in the life of the borderline. We already know that. You know, I've spent, you know, no shortage of videos talking about the damage that I experienced and the damage that it causes to them and to the people in their lives. To my utter shock and uh, glee and amazement, there are borderlines who are subscribing to the channel and seem to be getting something from it. That was never my intention, nor is it my intention now, but I appreciate that. And it's because those are the ones who are being brutally honest. And so... My last video before this one was called BPD Devours Your Soul and Creates a Black Hole Where Your Identity Should Be. And I read from um, a really enlightening comment from a borderline who's been in uh, therapy for 10 years. And let me just say to that person, I am so grateful for your bravery and your honesty you know, and there isn't an ounce of self-defensiveness in there and an, an ounce of blaming. This person, you know, may or may not agree with what I say. Probably there's a lot of things that I, I'm, you know, she probably disagrees with. But she is really uh, able to take a look at herself and and be honest. And, and it's obvious that she's done a lot of work because... You know, it shows a level of consciousness because borderline personality disorder and codependence are dysfunctions of the unconscious mind. Unconscious means you are not aware of it. So the whole idea of therapy, 12-step work, and spiritual discipline is to become conscious so you can be ruthlessly honest with yourself. And if you're going to recover from the pain that you're in, forget about being a codependent or not, the pain that you're in, if you don't have a sense of self, if you don't have 
uh, self-esteem, if you don't have a focus in life, if you don't have love for yourself, compassion for yourself, um, if, you, if you're still walking around limping, if you're still thinking about them all the time and thinking about what they did and wanting, wanting to tell them if you want to turn and say how evil they are, um, it means that you're still in pain. And I'm saying, do you want to be free of that? First thing you're going to have to do is own your side, how you got involved. And that means looking at you, the original wound that caused the vacancy, the black hole within you, that makes you chase after people who are terminally unavailable. All right, so uh, I'm going to read a quote, uh, not a quote, I'm going to read a comment. So bear in mind, if you leave a comment on this channel that the whole world can see, uh, I assume that you're willing to have a discussion about it. And I pick out comments that I think uh, engender a good discussion for people's healing. So this is one. This is one uh, from somebody named Emily in regards to the video I just did, BPD devours your soul and creates a black hole where your identity should be. And um, I think it's a she. She says... This is a better and more compassionate explanation of explaining codependency to a person in a relationship with a BPD. Without becoming extremely overtly defensive, arrogant, and abusive off the get, quote, abusive tough love versus compassionate tough love, thanks for the evolving way you choose to deliver your message versus the abusive way you were delivering the same message. I appreciate you working on the way you deliver your truth. I feel like you are able to understand negative feedback after you have totally devalued it before ingest. I think she's missing the word not. I think what she means to say is, I feel like you are not able to understand negative feedback after you have totally devalued it before ingesting it. I think the way you deliver a truth is important for it being received, especially if you are not aware of someone's truth. If you shove it down someone's throat without hearing their story out, it's abusive. Respond versus react. Thanks, man. All right, so since, Emily, you appreciate my new method, I'm going to try and use that new method now. I appreciate that you have gone to such lengths to try and turn this uh, personal attack into a compliment. You've really put a lot of effort in that. You've appreciate. You've you've repeated, um, you know, more than once that you appreciate that I'm changing. You know, you're either trying to, you know, uh, hypnotize me into I am changing my. You, you mention it twice. Um, you talk about thanks for evolving the way you choose to deliver your message. And then you say, I appreciate you working on the way you deliver your truth. And then without saying it about me, then you, you just give me a couple pointers. I think the way you deliver a truth is important to, for it to be received. If you shove it down someone's throat without hearing it, it's abusive. Respond versus react. So there's four times you're saying the same thing over and over again. Um, so as if I think somebody's in denial, I'm going to, I'm going to point it out. If I think somebody's being passive aggressive, I'm going to point it out. So without the abusiveness that you hear, maybe in the raised tones of my voice when I, you know, that's just uh, one of the ways that I communicate, which because, you know, I, I, the, the previous video, I was, I was really subdued because I was tired and I was having a lot of feelings. So maybe it didn't come out as intensely or strongly. And apparently you respond better to my tone of voice if I'm not having a lot of feelings about it. I think that you think I'm being abusive if I have a strong, direct approach. Well, it doesn't really matter what I say. So I'm going to try and keep myself in this calm demeanor. And in this calm demeanor, Emily, I would like to say to you that... Um, if what you wanted was to compliment me and to encourage me to change my approach to explaining codependency, then all you had to do was just simply say, 
Thank you for this more compassionate explanation of codependency. It was very helpful. If you had done that, I would have then taken that and gone, wow, I wonder what I did differently because I didn't consciously do anything differently. But after you give me the compliment, you pretty much crap all over it because then you go out of your way to personally attack me and judge me without sharing your own feelings. So at this point, it makes me wonder if you've ever been in therapy. Have you ever been in group therapy? Have you ever been in a 12-step uh, program? Because in any one of those, they would teach you to own your own feelings. Instead of hurling you know, um, f you know, facts at people, um, the, you would learn how to say, that makes me feel this way. And that way you're owning your own feelings and you're also leaving it open that your feelings might just be your own misunderstanding or your own projection. But you don't do that here. Because you say, without becoming extremely, overtly defensive, arrogant, and abusive off the get. Abusive is a judgment. Now, you can say that you feel abused, that my tone of voice or the way that I, I speak it makes, makes you feel attacked and abused. You can say that. I'd have a different response to you if you did that. You can say, um, you know, extremely overtly defensive, arrogant, and abusive off the get. That's just, a, that's, I mean, you just crapped all over the really good compliment you were just about to give because you wanted to help me be more the way you want me to be, which according to you is the right way and the way I do it, you know. There's now my, my tone is raising, so I'm obviously becoming defensive and abusive and aggressive, right? Um, so then you keep going back to trying to sort of, you know, uh, um, uh, hypnotize me into uh, thinking I'm changing. Thanks for evolving the way you choose. And again, you start with a with a compliment, and then you come in with this with this personal attack. Thanks for evolving the way you choose to deliver your message. You could have just stopped right there, versus the abusive way you were delivering the same message. That's your judgment. Abusive is a judgment. You could say forceful, direct, aggressive. Aggressive meaning going forward as opposed to what you're doing, which is extremely passive aggressive. What you really want to do is you've been waiting to tell me how you think how abusive I am. And instead of coming out and telling me that, you waited for an opportunity where you saw my guard down and then you came in with, the, with this half-assed, compliment, which would have been a great compliment if you had left it alone, and then start telling me what an asshole I am and how I'm doing it wrong. And um, then you, you say some other things, which I, I think are pretty interesting, which shows me that I think that you're, I don't think you, you're in, uh, you don't come across to me as somebody who's in recovery. So I don't know if you've ever been to therapy. I don't know if you've ever been to 12-step groups. It doesn't sound like it based on what I'm reading. I could be wrong. All I know is, you know, as you point out, you know, my reaction to your negative feedback. That's all I have. You say, um, uh, you say something that is almost worthwhile. You say, I feel like you are able to understand, and I think you mean to say, I feel like you are not able to understand negative feedback after you have totally devalued it before ingesting it. So what you want me to do is when somebody says something negative, you want me to listen to it and ingest it. I'm assuming your negative feedback. Again, you're not talking about yourself. You're not saying, I wish you would listen to my negative feedback and ingest it before devaluing it. That's what I think you're trying to say. Uh, the way I think the way you deliver a truth is important for it being received. In other words, uh, I'm delivering it in a way that isn't being received well. Again, I'm not doing it right. That's a judgment. 
Again, you're not sharing your, if you had said, for me, when you talk this way, I can hear what you're saying. When you say it this way, I can't hear you. And if you make it about yourself, then I'm motivated to try and help you. See what I mean? This is very passive aggressive. It comes across like an untreated codependent. Um, and then you say in all caps, especially, and this I think is really important about you, you say, especially if you are not aware of someone's truth, which makes me go, how am I supposed to know your truth, Emily? I don't even know who you are. I mean, do you want to send me like a video file where you talk for a half an hour and tell me all of your truth and your experience, and then I'll be able to see how you're different from all the other codependents? What makes your story how does that make you so much different than anybody else? Your truth, as you put it. You know, it's important to understand that your truth may not be the objective reality. This is exactly the problem with untreated borderlines. They have their, their truth, and their truth is complete craziness if it's wrong. If they're accusing you, of trying to destroy them and kill them when all you did was burp or look at your watch, then their truth, their, you know, they're wrapped up in their own narcissistic false reality, which to them is true. I'm, it's not my job to become aware of your truth, Emily. Uh, my, because I don't know you. Um, my job is to talk about codependence. And to explain to the codependent that they are responsible for all of their misery and all their pain. And just because you think you're different than all the other codependents doesn't change the facts. You're involved with a borderline. You are a codependent, which means that you have an unresolved, deep emotional wound that happened in childhood that you are trying to fix by being with somebody who is... Um, completely, totally unavailable and is abusive. And on top of that, you are completely unaware of your own abuse. Did you know that it's abusive to chase after somebody that doesn't want your love? Do you know that it's abusive when you try and force your healing onto somebody who has said they don't want it? Do you realize that your need to fix the borderline and make them feel loved is really come from your internal rage at your own parents? And you're trying to get back at them by forcing them to turn around and love you? Those are all abusive things and they're happening on an unconscious level. And I have to say, without any personal feelings of dislike or hatred or hurt feelings or anything, I find this comment to be extremely unconscious. I don't see you taking any honesty for your own feelings, and I don't see you trying to actually deliver a compliment. You're hiding your rage and anger that you have towards me. You're feeling that I'm abusing you, and you're going to now use this as an opportunity to get your revenge on me. Because maybe you think I'm, I've evolved my whatever, but I'm not going to let you blackmail me into changing my approach. I'm going to still be the same person. Yeah, I'm consciously holding down the tone so you can hear what I'm saying. But make no mistake about it. Uh, I find this, this comment to be borderline abusive. If you hadn't peppered it with these false compliments, I would have just blocked you. Because the one thing I won't do is I won't have somebody attack me and abuse me. They can share their feelings all they want. They can disagree with me all they want. But when, some, but when somebody starts calling me overtly defensive, arrogant, and abusive, and they repeat over and over again that I am abusive to them when I'm not, I'm direct. And I, you know, you, there's no such thing as abusive, tough love. There's two words, tough and love. It's either abusive or it's loving. Tough love means that it's, it's bitter medicine, but it's love. 
You take the love out of it, it's abusive. So there's no such thing as abusive love versus compassionate tough love. You can't have compassionate tough love. It's either tough love or it's, uh, you know, placating or nurturing or whatever. Um, my, you know, my method most of the time is tough love because the people, if, you know, most people, especially codependents, when you, when you co-sign their victimhood is that they don't heal. And I'm okay, Emily, with you being resentful towards me and angry with me if it drives you to get help. So if you haven't, go do a fourth step on me. If you don't know what a fourth step is, go get onto a CODA meeting and say, there's some guy on YouTube who's really abusive. I hate him. He makes me really angry. And he told me that I should come and do a fourth step inventory on my resentments against him. Because then you'll understand how you're the one that's choosing to react the way you're reacting because I am reminding you of somebody else. I'm reminding you of your dad, probably. You probably had an abusive father who was shameful and had very strong opinions. And so the only thing that he and I have in common is that I'm direct and have very strong opinions. And I, you know, I come across the way I come across and perhaps that reminds you of all the other stuff. And so you're projecting onto me all of the abusive tough love you got somewhere else. But I'm also not, I'm also not going to let up on you. I mean, uh, uh, codependence is abusive. And my experience of codependence is that they are so angry and they're so vindictive and they plot. They remember everything that you say and do and they plot against you. And you strike me as one of these people. Just on this comment, I don't know you. So I'm okay that uh, you don't like what I was doing before, and I'm okay that you like what I did in that video. I'm not quite sure what it was. I think it was probably my tone of voice more than anything else because I said some pretty harsh things about codependence. Or you're full of crap and you're, you're wanting to come and attack me and you're pretending to give me a compliment so, because you'll think I'll hear it better if you... You know, you placate my ego. I don't have an ego about this channel. Uh, this channel is something, I, like I said, I completely forgot about it. After the first month or two, I, after I got into my own recovery and I reached a state of recovery, I forgot about this channel. And that was my intention all along, was that I was just going to get it out and then I was just going to forget about it, which I did. And it wasn't until I started seeing that the channel was blowing up with tons of uh, subscriptions because I kept on getting emails about, man, where are all these subscriptions? They're not coming on my other channel. I went and saw that the views were going through the roof and people were commenting right and left and people were saying, give us more videos. You've really helped me. Nobody's saying it this way. So I went, oh, so I'm doing it here just to be helpful. But if... Uh, I stop getting views if this stops getting subscriptions and if if uh, I don't get the sense that people are, are are getting benefited I'll stop tomorrow I have no ego about this channel so stop trying to placate my ego it's not going to work I've got other things to do than this channel I got plenty of stuff to do with my other channel that I'm working really hard on that I do have a vested interest in because it's my business this isn't my business as of yet, I don't make any money off of this, and I've chosen not to. That may change, but for right now, it's just a labor of, of love. So, Emily, that's it. Um, guys, all codependents, you know, you know I'm, I'm targeting Emily here, but all codependents, the way to heal is by being brutally honest. And there's nothing that I've said about Emily that hasn't been true about me at some point. You know, the fact that I was in a relationship with a borderline and I kept on chasing after her, that was abusive. It was abusive of me uh, to, and I'm going to use my assistant here, it was abusive of me that the adult that was in front of me, whom I was trying to have a romantic relationship with, um, was this on a psychological level, broken and stuck in that mode. I would never try and have a romantic relationship with a toddler. 
especially a toddler that's in torment. And it was abusive of me unconsciously. I wasn't consciously doing it, neither is anybody else. I was unconsciously trying to force my agenda on a toddler. I was trying to ask a toddler to love me like an adult, to heal my wounds, and to, you know, to be the, the beautiful sex kitten I've always wanted in my life. Just because she looked like the beautiful sex kitten and because she had a very strong intellect and was able to communicate verbally very well, you know, obviously her inability to connect with me without abusing both of us should have been enough to stop me after the first time and go, wow, it's, you know, this, this is the last thing this woman needs is for me to try and have a relationship with her. So, you know, we talk about the abuse that the borderlines do to us because of their mental illness. But what about your mental illness? I don't know that codependency is technically a mental illness. Emotional dysfunction. You have it as well, and you are just as responsible because if it weren't for the, the codependents who keep taking up the slack for the borderline, the narcissist, the alcoholic, the drug addict, the gambling addict, the whatever it is, the rageaholic, if it wasn't for the codependent who kept on taking up the slack and minimizing and justifying and explaining it away, there's a lot more people that would get help a lot more quickly because there would be nobody to give them the supply. You know, we talk about them looking for their next supply. You were a supply and you chose to give that to them and you did it out of your own selfish need to be loved. There's nothing wrong with that as long as you're conscious. But if you're conscious of what's going on in your unconscious, you're going to go, oh, wow, this is the wrong target for my love. That's a toddler right there. But those of you who are full of rage, because codependents are the most rageful people I know, they are so full of rage, your rage drives you to keep forcing it on them. I'm going to make them love me. You're going to sit here and you're going to let me love you and then you're going to turn around and you're going to love me. How do I know? Because I did it. And I've been on the other end of that numerous times myself. All right, so that's it. Um, so, Emily, you know, you're welcome to stay on the channel. You're welcome to go watch another channel if you think I'm abusive. But, I, like I said, I'm not going to let you... Uh, I'm not going to let you emotionally blackmail me into changing my approach because you don't like it. I would much rather talk about why you think I'm abusive just because I'm saying things you don't want to hear. And I'd much rather hear about your uh, journey to take a look at your codependence. I'm assuming, assuming you are a codependent. Sounds like you're presently in a relationship with a borderline, which would explain why you don't like my extreme take on it. But I only know what you tell me. And, you know, if since you've since you've uh, decided to give me some unsolicited advice about how to change my message, I'm going to give you some unsolicited advice, which is I would start talking from your own feelings. Instead of, you know, you haven't revealed anything about yourself. You didn't tell me where you are. Are you a borderline? Are you a codependent? Are you in a relationship? Were you in a relationship? You haven't said the way you come across makes me feel a certain way. You haven't shared anything about yourself. All you've done is attack me, talk about yourself and the borderlines in the third person. And you've gone over and over again trying to tell me how to do it and just assume that your way is the right way and mine is the wrong way. And um, to me, there's a lot of projection here. You're projecting onto me stuff, childhood stuff, probably with your dad. Anyway, but as I said, I'm not a therapist and I have no intention of being your therapist, but I recommend you check one out. Two things before I shut up, th three-pronged approach. First of all, go find a therapist who is trained to help codependents of cluster B personalities, disorders. Number two, go to CODA, Codependence Anonymous. You can go online to a Zoom meeting anywhere in the world. You have no excuse. And do a fourth step. Look at your rage and your anger. Look at your expectations. Deal with your anger. Do what you need to to get honest with your anger. 
And three, uh, have a spiritual practice, a spiritual discipline, whether it's church, meditation, yoga, tai chi, Satan's temple, I don't care. Some kind of spiritual discipline, those three. Therapy, 12 steps, and uh, spiritual discipline. And work that every day. And then I think you can have what I believe that I have, which is I have a measure of um, a measure of current state of recovery from being uh, a codependent to a borderline. All right, that's it. Talk to you guys later.